everyone, Paul I say, and welcome to part three of our Tamiya 124 Nissan Skyline R32 GTR video build. The continuation of our bastardization of this wonderful Tamiya kit with a um, okay, not too bad hobby design detail upset. So if you're watching me again, we had a few problems. We had a massively warped bumper. The wheels haven't been great quality. Instructions aren't great from hobby design. But we've got it together and we're getting there. So in part one, we did all the paintwork. Part two, we've done more paintwork on all the components, interior and the uh, engine and what have you. In part three, we're going to put everything together and get this thing finished. Now, it's an interesting colour, this one. It's very, very strange. Uh, it's grown on me the more I've looked at it as we've gone. And in the final pictures, it actually looks pretty decent. So I'm quite happy with it at the end. So... Let me know your thoughts on the colour at the end. <laughs> we'll see what we think. It's a mismatch, mismatch colour. I don't think anyone knows exactly what it is. I've been calling it Speckled Clown Fart. Because I think that's what a Speckled Clown Fart would look like, to be honest. So let me know your thoughts on the colour at the end of the video. Anyway, let's crack on with the build. Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel. Click the bell notifications. Get notified of our latest videos. Give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. You now have the chance to support the video content creation by using Patreon or the PayPal me link in the description down below. All the videos always remain free to watch. This is just your chance to help support the videos. We're going to continue where we left off in part two. We've got all our parts we painted up and detail painted last time. And we're going to start building up our engine. So some careful super glue application. And we can start assembling all the parts as per the instructions. Now the Tamiya engines tend to be pretty decent. They're not too bad. They're not super detailed. But they're certainly detailed enough to warrant um, a bit of attention to. Uh, and showing should you wish last skyline i did in 24 scale that i didn't detail the engine at all i think i glued the bonnet on the car so it was actually nice to build this one up and it goes together pretty well and like i say with the red colors we've got a nice myriad of metallic colors uh, on there as well and it builds up into not a bad engine it could do with a lot more detail it's missing a lot of stuff in there uh, and if you want to super detail you could but for me i was quite happy to build this out of the box so, like I said, we've got the nice red LP42 on all the covers, um, LP5 and all the black, and uh, various super metallics and LP metallics all over the other parts as well. So, like I say, decent engine, goes together trouble-free, looks pretty good when it's done, and uh, yeah, always nice to get an engine. I never used to enjoy building these as much, but definitely do now. Um, I kind of used to always lose interest after I built the body and never really enjoyed the engine, the interior and what have you but definitely enjoy them more nowadays and it's nice to get an engine with a kit but sometimes it's nice to just build the curbside as well and just build the straight up model so as I said in the last video these super glue applicators are brilliant very very precise levels of uh, glue can be applied and this super glue, very very good as well you can find these in my Amazon affiliate store if you look in the description down below now, like I said, we paint up the discs in uh, super metallic iron. I knew full well we had some photo edges to go on, so we're going to cut this out, uh, cut off the fret, cut off all the fret joining points, and then we can use our Tamiya diamond file to sand all the rough edges smooth. And then these are going to be glued in place over the resin um, discs. Now, be careful here because one set of these is actually reversed. So on this side, these go on here as you can see but on the other side you see we've already applied the glue on the other disc and they don't they go on the back you have to cut them off first otherwise they don't fit so be aware when you're assembling them and also be aware of super glue and if you do get any CA glue on the disc if you've got no plastic there you can use some acetone on a cotton bud and wipe it off the disc and caliper assembly just pushes together we will add a little bit of glue later on and then we've got the fiddly part of assembling all the front suspension uh, and rear suspension as well. Now, when I test fitted the car uh, with the wheels, it was riding way too high. And I mean massively too high. I even had to sand the poly caps to get these into the aftermarket resin hubs. So a quick sand over with a UMP sponge. And they fitted in nice and snug. 
then we can glue the resin uh, hub disc assembly into place on the kit plastic part. Now, like I say, the back end wasn't too bad. The back end set quite nice. Uh, the front end was riding way too high. So we're going to have to deal with that in a minute. Thankfully, it's pretty easy to deal with. A little bit haphazard, but we dealt with it. Um, till then, we've got the fuel tank to glue in place. I can say all the front ends in place now. You see all the discs on, transmission and engine. So we've got the fuel tank on the back, and then we get all the rear differential on and all the rear suspension in place as well. So we're just following the instructions, working our way through. Uh, we've done all the work on the parts, they're all painted, detail painted and washed. So all the hard work is done. It's literally just assembly now, just to finish off the model. And this is where it's good to get rid of all those parts and get them all cleaned up and ready because you don't have to keep stopping then to paint things. It's literally all done and all assembly. Like I say, get the rear differential in and all the rear subframe with the suspension in place. Just clicks in place. And then you need to move those rear suspension shock towers. And there's two little nubs that they sit on as well. So just follow the instructions and you really can't go wrong. Like I say, the back end of the car sat just fine. Um, no problem at all. Skylines don't tend to sit that low really out of the factory. So I wasn't going for a super low look. Uh, but like I said, the front was riding way too high. So we need to remedy that in a bit. Uh, again, just test fitting the calipers on the back. And a quick test fit of the wheels. So like I say, back end pretty much spot on. The front end riding way too high. Now we've lost our front mounted clips because the front mounted the Tamiya bumper's gone. So it's kind of friction fitted in with the intercooler. But yeah, we're riding a little bit too high on the front. So as you can see, it looks a bit off-roader-ish. So my remedy to that was trim the suspension uh, mountain point with the uh, caliper assembly clips to. It still leaves a hole, so that's perfect where we can mount it to. It's like a, uh, a hook, so we're just shortening the length of it, and that pushes the caliper up higher. Then on the bottom piece, uh, I just bent the arm a little bit to bring it down, and they married up quite well. You may need to find, uh, you add a little bit of, um, say, hollow rod at the top to hold things in, but for me, mine was pretty good. As you can see, the ride height's not too bad. It's going to sit a tad higher when we've got all the interior in and all the glass, uh, but more than happy with that. It was sitting quite good, and the white wheels look great. Very happy with those white wheels. And there we are. So happy we got that sorted. It was fairly simple to do. Um, I can say a little bit haphazard cutting parts off, but sometimes you've got to do what you've got to do. And a few parts did fall off and need to glue them back in place, but we got those in. Anti-roll bar in place as well. Like I said, it's not the most um, inspiring running gear. It's mostly black um, with a few metallic parts here and there. But hey, it is what it is. We make the most of what we can. And our exhaust in this beautiful super metallic iron, which is a lovely colour. And I was going to weather the exhaust. And I looked at it and thought, you know what? I actually really like it, that colour. I'm going to leave it as, as is. So a couple of dabs of CA glue onto locating points. Line it all up. Offer it up. Make sure it's all straight, which it is. And there we go. And then the transmission uh, support bar glued in place as well. Now, seat belts. Uh, you've seen me build these before. If you want to see an in-depth uh, guide, go to the Subaru Technique series. This is the Studio 27 set I use. You can see the number at the top if you pause it. I think it's 24177. There you go. If you can find them. And I'm going to just quickly assemble one piece so you can see roughly how I do it. So we cut off the... Uh, center buckles clean them all up uh, like I said I'm not going to show this in depth but you can go watch this on the Super Techniques video where I do kind of show it in depth we need to use our PE bender to fold the edges of each one of these buckles I don't know are they buckles what would you call them they're the bitty to pull to adjust I don't know, the uh, harness adjustment piece I don't know what do we call it but PE bend until not something you use all the time, but when you've got it, it's invaluable. For getting 90 degree bends in PE precisely, absolutely superb. This is my small shop tools one. There is a link in the products I use in the description. Uh, they are fiddly these. They take a bit of uh, time to do. The more you do, the better and faster you'll get at doing it. So just take your time. And I do it a simpler way. I kind of cheat. I don't do it the proper way the instructions call out for. So just bend both the edges on that buckle, 
I've got my 3 mil green ribbon, which I got off Amazon, in green for the Takata belts. Cut the ribbon on an angle so it goes through the buckle easily. On this one, it just needs a little bit of tape and then fold them back on itself. It's a little bit of double-sided tape. This is the basic assembly. Follow the instructions in the buckles, in the buckles, in the seatbelt set. This is basically how I do it. I mean, if I need to at some point, I'll do another video, but it is included in the Subaru Technique series. It'd be part of the interior. I think there's two parts in the interior and it's in one of those. If I remember, I'll link it in the description for you. If I don't do it and you want to see it, just remind me and I'll post a link. And then on the bottom piece, we've got to feed it through one bar at the top, which is a little bit trickier now. So I like to push the tweezers through to get the ribbon down. Uh, use the flat edge of the decal tweezers. Pull that through. You may also find you need to retrim the end because we've got to feed it back through again. And you'll find once it frays, it's a bit tricky to get through. And the thing with this is it'll either go through first time or it's not going to go through. So if it doesn't go through first time, you're probably going to have to cut um, the angle sharp again. Because once it gets even slightly frayed, you'll have trouble feeding it through the photo etch. And there we go. Once you're happy with the length, cut it straight. Give it all a little pull too. And a little bit of uh, double-sided tape underneath again. You can use super glue, but in my experience, the super glue seeps through the ribbon. It kind of ruins it. So this cheap 2 mil, 3 mil, uh, what's well 2 mil this, um, double-sided tape works wonders, and there's one built. So I'm not going to go through the whole thing because it would be an entire video upon itself, but like I say, Super Techniques video, I'll put it in the description if I remember, and there's my easy, cheap way of doing seatbelts. I've got the Takata um, logos on there, which come with the seatbelt set itself, and they've been put in place, and I hid those little bit of Mr's leveling thinner um just to melt them in place it'd be quick it doesn't damage the decal and it melts it into the ribbon makes it look a part of the fabric nice little trick i did years ago that i've been using for some time uh some strategic dabs of uh say glue on the existing mounting points for the kit seats and the seats fit in really well thankfully these seats are kind of brightening up what is a rather dreary interior so the green belts look great, and then we're going to trim them and just glue them as if they go through the back of the seat, like so. So I've got a little dab of CA on the back. Just going to line it up, and then press it down. And then push the slack part of the seat belt down as well, and repeat that for all the other three as well. That gives you the indication it's going through the back of the seat. And there we go. So here it doesn't look too bad. I've seen a lot worse before. The green certainly brightens it up. Those lovely seats from Hobby Design are very, very nice. I'm glad I added those. Engine's not looking too bad for a basic kit engine. And then a wash. So we've got the Tamiya panel line wash. And as I always say, if it'll hold a wash, put a wash in it. So while we're doing all the brakes and that, we'll do the wheels as well. Don't go too heavy on the wheels because they are white. So you don't want to be in heavily washed. So this is thinned with Santador. I'm going to put it in, let it dry, and we'll wipe off all the excess. And then on the intercooler, which has got a nice piece of photo etch out the detail upset in it, we'll put a wash on and wipe off the excess later. Now, if you remember when we clear coated this, it got a ton of dust in the finish. Really disappointing, but just one of those things. So we need to work at this now. It's going to take quite a bit of time to get as much of the dust out as we possibly can. And while we're there, we can flat it back. Any orange peel can be dealt with um and we can polish it all up to a nice high shine now, like i say it's a very strange color this it looks green in this light whereas to me it's actually purple it's a very very weird color um somebody commented that it looks like midnight purple thread it's not it doesn't have the same flip um it's kind of a in between midnight purple two and three where it's not quite three and it's not quite two it, it's a strange color it really is but basically we've got some 8,000 and 12,000 micro mesh. And we're going to flat it all and get rid of as much of the dust as we can. And then I'm going to come in with the ultimate polish system. Start with the compound and one of our nice clean cotton cloths. And give it all a polish up. So we use the more abrasive compound first. Wipe all that off. And then come with the less abrasive polish to get it to a high shine. Now if you find the finish is acceptable, uh, you can always rinse and repeat. 
literally rinse and repeat as you'll see in a little bit uh, until you get the shine you want. But what I would recommend doing is leaving any clear coats 2K for at least a week and anything else for maybe a couple of weeks because nothing dries as quick as 2K or as hard. And uh, you may find you're kind of chasing your own tail trying to polish up a clear coat that's not fully cured yet. So yeah, that's my advice. 2K I leave for a week. Uh, everything else I try and leave as long as possible because they just don't dry as quick or as hard as 2K. But you can see just from the compound alone, we're getting a really nice shine. Uh, we need to work around all the body panels, so the main body, the bonnet, and the boot spoiler as well. And with some gentle circular motions. Now, be careful of any raised areas, like those ridges in the middle of the bonnet and the edge as well. And like on the top of this gutter in and the uh, car, because it's so easy to burn through the finish. Uh, we're on to our polish now. This is a lot less abrasive, and this will give us our high shine at the end. So you polish it on, repeat if needed, and then get another clean cloth and polish it all until it's all gone and you're left with a nice high shine. Now, see, so be careful. It's only a plastic body, so it won't take a whole load of abuse. Parts will break off if you're not careful, and you can break the A-pillars if you're a bit rough. But we're getting a nice shine there. Like I say, we've still got some dust spots in there. There's a point where I'm just like, yeah, that'll do me. I'm not going to risk ruining the clear coat. I've said this many times. I will accept a slight flaw rather than ruining the whole thing after have to start over. So sometimes you've just got to push yourself to the limit, and sometimes you've got to know your limit. So if you're happy to push it and try and fully get rid of that dust spot, then fair play. For me, sometimes I just think, yeah, that's enough. There's not much left on that now. Um, I'm going to end up burning through and ruining all my hard work. Now, as you're going through, you're going to get dry polish and compound. So I have an old toothbrush at hand to get in all the panel lines and what have you to get rid of any excess dust. Uh, and like I say, same as before, the polish, work our way around all the body panels, the bonnet and the boot spoiler as well. Just be aware on the boot spoiler, it is resin. So it is a lot more delicate. So take your time. And obviously when doing the body work as well, be aware we glued on resin bumpers uh the side skirt and the rear spat so you don't be going absolutely mental on those because they're only ca glued in place and if you look a bit rough you run the risk of snap them off and like i say the spoiler be very careful on this part it's very flexible and it would snap very easy now i said about rinse and repeat so at the end you're going to end up with all bits of um polish stuck in all the panel lines sometimes the brush won't get it out so i load up my airbrush my apex 0.35 with some water and I literally jet wash it all off. Now, for God's sake, make sure you're using water. I've nearly picked up lacquer thinner before now and done this. And that would ruin the paint job. So make sure the bottle you've got in front of you is water. No others at hand that you can accidentally pick up. And make sure it's clearly labelled as well. And all I'm doing is just right up close at 16 PSI, pressure washing all those panel lines and seams. And just getting any excess uh, wash. Uh, sorry, polish out. So that way we know it's all nice and clean and we can give her a proper buff up at the end of our kind of uh, dragging out excess polish or having any white marks in all the panel lines. So a nice little tip to do. And then at the end, you can use the airbrush to dry off the model as well. Dry it off properly and then get a fresh clean cloth and give it one final quick buff up. Don't forget to get inside as well because I guarantee you'll end up with polish and what have you on the inside of the wheel arches, inside of the windscreen. So make sure you get rid of it all. But we've got a beautiful shine off this one. She's come up really well, and the colour really starting to pop now. Looking really, really good. It's just a crazy colour. It looks green here. looks black there. To me, right in front of me, that's purple. It is a strange, strange colour. Like I say, if you do spot any um, excess polish, just get your brush in there again. Nice, old, soft, used toothbrush is perfect. So with that done, we're on to our lights. So we're going to clean up all the clear parts. So cut them off the sprue, give them a light sand and a buff, and then we need to paint them. So we've got the red rear afterburner lights to do, and the front orange um, indicators to do. So the rear lights are red, and the front lights are orange. So we're going to mount them on this uh, reversed masking tape on a wooden tongue depressor. like so and then on the opposite side we'll do our indicators as well and that way we can spray one end red 
one end yellow. Simple, quick and easy, a bit like me. Okay, maybe not quick. Then in the spray booth, we've got some Tamiya LP 53 and 52, which is clear red and clear yellow. And we've thinned a little bit with Tamiya Lacquer Thin and Retarder. Not the full amount we normally do, probably only about 20% on this. And with a couple of light coats working it up, we've painted all our lights. Now, masking another monotonous task and quite kind of fruitless on this thing. We're going to paint the window rubbers in black. Now, you can barely see them uh, when they're painted black, but it needs doing because it is part of the car. But I did this. It took about a half an hour. It didn't take that long to do. I'm using the Tamiya 1mm tape to go around the edge of the windscreens and the windows. And it's fairly simple to do. Just take your time and follow the demarcation that's naturally there from the windows. And just follow it all the way down. And then we can infill it with larger pieces of tape later. And then some cling film at the end to paint it. So as you can see, we started to infill it with uh, more larger 6mm masking tape. Taking the edge. So we get the fine tape to get the demarcation. And then the 6mm tape to um, basically infill the rest. And there you go. That's it. That's that in place. And then, like I say, cling film. Ideal for filling all the larger areas. That way you're not wasting loads of tape. Just wrap it round and infill all the areas where you don't need it. And just make sure everything's covered. Word of warning on using cling film. Don't put it over on clear decals. I have seen it take decals off before, so be very careful. And then our clear part, so our clear windscreen, carefully cut it off. If you cut through the plastic very, very slowly with your cutters, it doesn't make it go as white. So well, it doesn't make it go white at all. If you cut through it in one snip, like you normally do with plastic, uh, it'll leave white marks. So if you just take your time, just squeeze really slowly till it goes through, it'll cut it a lot cleaner. Now, really simple masking on this. I did actually have a mask set for this from Hero Boy. Didn't really need it. I just followed the kit instructions and masked it off really simply with just masking tape. And then we're in the spray booth, we're just making sure all those edges are burnished down properly. And we're going with LP5. I normally go with Mr. Surfacer, but it's a flat finish paint, and I wanted a bit of shine on this uh, to hopefully try and pick it out from the rest of the purple. Um, you can see it to a degree, but not too much. So we've got the side rear front windscreen and that lower uh, scuttle panel, we call them. I don't know what you call them in your country, but they're called scuttle panels here, I believe, where the windscreen wipers and what have you mount. That's all we painted in black, and everything else is carefully masked off, so we don't get any overspray going through. Like I said, it's a couple of uh, light coats. Got a 0.3 apex at about 16 psi, and then we use the same paint on the inside of the screen as well. Don't flood this on, or you risk bleed through the masking tape. Just want some nice thin coats. While that's drying, I did think about masking up these front lights. Then when I looked at them and seen how they fitted, I just thought I'd brush paint them. So I've got some Vallejo Model Air Silver and a brush. Um, I'm just going to carefully brush paint all inside. And the beauty of this, again, water-based paint over lacquer. If you have any excess, you can actually come in with a pointy cotton bud and just perfectly wipe it off with no detrimental effects whatsoever. Now the grills. Now I was originally intended on painting these black. These are the photo edge grills that our hobby design set. So I just thought I'd have a little bit of a test fit. They fitted perfect and I thought, you know what? I actually like them in silver. So I left them silver. So lining up where they need to go, we hit them with our UV pen. Again, there's links to this in the description down below. It's on my products I use list, not the Amazon store. Uh, hit it with the UV pen, hit it with the UV light. And these are quick, fuss-free, easy, mess-free ways of gluing parts in place. Lots of PE on this front bumper. This is the aftermarket one, so again, take some time and care doing this. Go for the glued in place, and if you glue right on the edges, you won't see it from the outside. And there we go, job done. Headlights, I cut off the plastic sprue again. A little dab of deluxe materials glue and glaze, and they're pushed in place. Just be careful. There we go, get one. And then get tother. E by ek. 
and just pop them in place like so. There we are. And then our rear lights, these come with nice photo etch back in, so we don't need to paint the inside of the silver. So we get photo etch rings. One side is shiny on the other, so we put the shinier side facing backwards towards the light. A little dab of glue and glaze on each one, on all four of them. And there we go. Leave those to dry. Once you're happy that they're dry, we'll put a little dab of glue in where the light mounts itself. Don't worry if we put too much in, we can wipe off the excess as you'll see in a minute. But we'll put a generous amount in there. You could use super glue, but I've gone more and more to using water based glues on the exterior because if you get any mess, you can just wipe it straight back off. Like I say, even if any of this squeezes out the sides, get a moist cotton bud and it will wipe off the 2K, no problem whatsoever. As you see, I did apply a little bit too much, but I definitely didn't lick that. And you can just wipe off any excess white glue, like so. There you go. Nice and simple. Now all the lights. So the front indicators, front headlights, we're going to go around with our Sharpie. And just put the black around there. It just gives it a look of the rubber trim that's on the real lights. And I always find it adds a little bit of depth. To the model so another step well worth doing you know any permanent marker will do whether it be an edding or a sharpie whatever and it's a worthwhile step doing so have a go especially on the headlights any clear parts look great with this on and you're just literally following the edge let the marker follow the edge of the plastic and it just literally gives it that blackened look of the seal interior glass slot in pace pretty perfect Make sure it's fully pushed down. I did find one side was sitting a little bit higher than the other. Once you've got it in place, UV glue pen, again, invaluable here. Uh, put a little dab in a place it won't be seen. Give it a second or two for it to flow. The capillary reaction of the pen is quite good. It really is. So give it a second to seat down. And then it says five second cure on the glue. It's not. It's more like 10 to 15. So give it a little bit longer, unless you've got a stronger UV pen and then just glue it in place and then repeat on the other side. And it's just so much cleaner using say glue. It really is. And then with the body on as a quick test fit and the bonnet on as a test fit too, we can just see how everything's sitting and it's looking good. Mirrors, we've got some um, metal uh, transfers to go in place. They came with the Nismo kit. Don't come with this one, but they came with the Nismo kit. So I stole them. I'm not going to lie. I nicked them out the other kit. Uh, I do have some photo etch ones as well, so you can reuse those on the Nismo one. But just for ease, I use these ones. And then some Deluxe Materials Glue and Glaze, which has been left out for some time. And it's got very tacky with glue the mirrors in place. And I've also glued the spoiler in place as well with the same glue. Just a couple of dabs, dropped it in place, left it alone, and we're all good. And the final step, that's it. Everything's in. Like I said, the body just slots in over the back, as we've had it on many times. There's nothing holding up the front. It's just literally friction fit over that intercooler. So it's a very easy task to remove it and put it back on. I'm just going to give it a good polish up with our UMP Shine solution. So you just wipe this on with a clean cloth, let it haze off, and then buff it off with a clean cloth later. Like I say, I'm under no illusion of trying to hide the fact that I will have some flaws in my paint from time to time. They can't all go well. This thing was covered in dust spots. Um, I got rid of them as much as I possibly could, but it's just sometimes you have to admit defeat. You really do and think, I'm going to completely burn through this paint if I carry on. There's only so much paint on there to polish and sand, um, and sometimes just go admit it and leave it. And there we go. There she is. She's all done. I'm really happy with this. Can somebody know the color it's going to be? I think it's turned out well, but this is the color I can see to my eye, whereas on camera it looks green. It's very, very strange. It really is. But it was a happy accident, this color. It's not the color I hoped it would be. If you look closely on the edges, you can see some of the green tinge of the paint. Look on the rear quarters there by the rear lights. You can see the green on it. Um, so it's a really weird color. But anyway, it looks great. So this was originally primed in uh, Mr. Surface of Black. Obviously, we did all our side skirts, front bumper, rear wheel spat so we had quite a bit of surgery you can see the color flip there now on the bottom half of the side very strange so yeah the aftermarket hobby design detail upset worked really well um it was quite fuss free cutting it all apart and gluing it on in the end so it worked out well primed service of 1500 black we used the gravity supposed midnight purple three 
Uh, we've cleared it in Gravity Colors uh, 2K Clear Coat. We had some custom uh, hobby design ride seats we added on the interior, along with our Takata belts. Uh, we flocked the interior, we made the custom exhaust. We've added the beautiful white wheels as well. Um, rear spoiler. Now, I wasn't keen on that when I first seen it. And then the more I've test fitted it and looked at it, the more it's grown on me. And I actually really do like that rear spoiler now. It's looking good. Happy with the stance of this. The ride height looks good. And um, yeah, happy with it. The engine looks good. I'll pop a picture in at the end for you to have a look. Um, and yeah, it's turned out quite well. Uh, my new uh, scale production background to go along my pit lane one for the road cars. Looks pretty decent as well. And just a pretty car. Really turned out well. Um, like I said, to build them and putting off for some time, so I found it quite daunting, and I'm glad I finally got through and did it. Engine, there's the engine, just a very quick picture for you. Uh, it's not really that special to look at at all, but it's there, and you make the best of what you've got. And there we are. So, yes, I'm happy how that's turned out. The R32 Skyline was never one of my most favourite Skylines, until I built that 12 scale, no I didn't, I built the 24 scale one to nine cherry red. Uh, that's a beautiful color. I nearly painted this in that color. Um, and then I built the 12 scale one. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good car. It is. I like the R32 now. Still prefer the R34. I think it's a more, just a prettier, more aggressive looking car. But this is a, it's a great looking car. And uh, it's the original Godzilla. So what reason is there not to like it? Happy with the colour this turned out as. It's, it's a bit of an odd colour. It does have a flip in it. If you look at the side profile pic, if you go back and look, you can see the green tinge on it, but it's definitely not Midnight Purple 3. Nowhere near the right colour. The R34 I did a few years back in the splash colour. Ah, uh, boo. Um, was a much better colour. And I do have the proper colours. So speaking to Gravity, they told me it was one of their old paint suppliers. So whether there's been a little bit of a problem, I don't know. Uh, and they sent me out a free... Uh, dual pack bottle of the new Midnight Purple 3. So I would have loved this car to have been that colour, but it's not. So the best of a bad situation, and it is where it is. Now, a few people made a comment about the pigment size on the paint. I don't think they're too bad on this one. In the sun they are. But it's very hard to find pigments that small of different coloured pigments in paint. If you do it as silver with silver flakes, the flakes are going to blend in more. They're not going to be as obvious. Because this has got green and gold silver pigments in it, they are going to be noticeable regardless of the size. So for me, I don't think they're too bad. The same thing not as bad as that call there because that thing was horrific. Um, I don't think they're too bad on this. And the overall colour, I actually quite like it. It's really grown on me. Uh, and I'm so glad it did the white wheels because they look great as well. Interior looks good. Those beautiful seats from Hobby Design look great. With the Takata belt, lovely. Excellent flocking by my girlfriend, Hannah. Superb job. Um, and it looks good. It does look good. I'm happy how it's turned out. And uh, It's a build. I was discussing this today. I've had this detail up for nearly a year. And it's been on my bench about six times looking at it thinking, I want to build that. And every time I've opened the box, read the instructions, I'm like, oh, I've got to cut all the bumper off and the sides get, oh, it's too much trouble. I'm going to ruin it. It's too difficult to do. And I put it back. And after building that model factory hero kit, nothing is as daunting as that. So it was easy. I mean, in the first video, we had that bumper and the sides get off in about half an hour. And then for glued in place within the first hour and a half. So something I've been putting off for a long time actually turned out to be really easy. So, you know, sometimes it's good to push yourself. And I'm glad I did because it's a detail upset I've wanted to do for a long, long time. And now I've done it. This is complete. I took part in the uh, ISM. Japanese group build as well, so it's a win-win there as well. Uh, and I got a fairly pretty model out of it as well. I'm happy with it, it's not perfect, none of my models ever are. But all you can ever do is the best you can, and that's what I've done here. Not the best colour, certainly isn't. Um, but I think it's quite a pretty colour in the end, it's unusual, and I'm happy how it's turned out. At the end of the day, that's all that's important. So what's next? What is next? Should I tell you? It's this. This is next. I'm going to do that Galaxy Models uh, Fleet Line of Chevrolet. I did a review of this a while back. You can go back on the channel and have a look. And I'm going to do it in the custom colour shown here. Uh, I've got Ford Royal Maroon Red to do it in, which is a stunning colour. If I remember, I'll put a picture up. This is next. 
It's in the spray booth right now. There's the box for it right there. It's primed in the spray booth. Um, so you're going to see that pretty soon as well. So that's the next project. There we are. We've still got the Fatty Hero Lantier on the go. I bought the Lantier 037 now as well. Sold a few kits to get that. And the GSX RR is still there to do. We will get back to that. We will get it's under the bench. It's there to do. Uh, and I'm getting the urge to do it again. So that's good. So yes, we'll get back to that very soon. There you go. Sneak peek at what's next. Anyway, as always, like support the channel. There's a Patreon me link down below. If you become a tier two or higher, you get two weekly releasing all the videos. And uh, all the patrons get a weekly exclusive live stream on a Wednesday morning. And you help support and keep me able to do these videos because without your support on that. I couldn't do this. Each and every one of you patrons is very important. So please consider becoming a patron. If you are one, stay one. <laughs> if you can, stay one and help support the videos and help keep them going. Uh, there's also a PayPal me link and a buy me a coffee link as well. And everything else, ISM, UMP related is down below, including the forum, Facebook page, UMP retail, the group build page, offer hangout group, my poor ISM modeling page. My personal emails get in touch with me, my scale mates, my Amazon store, all the products in that you can get through Amazon, and there's a product list on there as well. Like I said, there's an email down there should you wish to get in touch. And leave a comment on the videos. Do appreciate all the comments. They spur me on through the builds. YouTube this time here kind of dies down. The comments die down, the views drop. So if you are watching any YouTuber, make the concerted effort to leave a thumbs up and leave a comment because it does make a big difference and sparing people on with the build it really does it'll push people to make more videos so always remember they're taking the time to make a video for you take the time to leave a comment or give a thumbs up it does make a world of difference uh and of course sub click the bell notification and give a thumbs up as well question for today hmm oh, it's getting tough to think of questions now put out that many videos and asking that many questions it's tough to think of a question so what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask you a question now. Then I'm going to ask um, for Friday night. No, I'm not going to save that one. I'm going to ask you a different question instead. Let me see. Uh, what happy accidents have you had? Not in that way, while modelling. Like with me, this colour wasn't the colour I expected. I was a bit disappointed at first, but in the end it turned out to look okay. What mistakes have you done? Like you've cut something off by accident. You've modified something, you've changed something, you've picked the wrong colour. What happy accidents have you had whilst modelling? What, what have you done by accident? Not about it, accidentally added a bit of battle damage, not meaning to, or you know, picked the wrong paint up, or what have you. Have you had any accidental colours? So for me, it's this. This is a, a colour I would not have picked if I'd known it was going to be this colour, but I'm kind of glad I did. It was a nice colour. Um, and other than that, I can't think of anything offhand. So you let me know yours and comment down below. There we are. Thanks a lot, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.